What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Oliver and on this channel we talk about education and early career development. And during these weekly live Q&A sessions, I answer your most burning questions about living, studying and working in Finland. And how these live streams work is that there is a link to a Google form in the description box below. And if you want me to answer your questions live, please post your questions into the Google form. That way I will have all of, all of your questions in front of me here on the computer and I will be able to go through your questions one by one in the order that they come in. The reason why we do it this way on this channel is that the live chat gets quite busy at times and it's very difficult for me to follow along with the chat uh, while I'm answering your questions. So again, if you have any questions, uh, there's a link to a Google form down below. Uh, before we jump into the first questions, let me just super quickly share the stream to our Discord server. Uh, if you are not, uh, for some reason, yet a member of our Discord server, I highly recommend that you join. Uh, the idea of the server is to build a community of people uh, who are interested in uh, living, studying and working in Finland. And in the server, we have almost 700 people at, at this moment um, who are either coming or already in Finland. And uh, people answer each other's questions. And I also post updates uh, to the server about upcoming uh, videos and live streams just like this one. If you're interested in joining, there's a link in the live chat right now. <laughs> All right, before I jump into the first questions, let me just super quickly say hey to everyone who have just joined the, the stream. We have... Um, uh, Barry Gump, uh, game dev, what's up? Welcome to the stream. We have Olga, we have Eric, what's up? Welcome, my man. Awesome to have you here again. We have Tatiana, we have uh, uh, Tropicum, uh, Tropk, Tropicum 4.6 saying hello, what's up? Welcome to the stream as well. Uh, awesome. Super quickly, let's uh, do one thing before I start the stream itself. Just a quick moment. There you go. Actually, uh, Barikam saying that here I'm ES. This is just a new account. Awesome. That's actually good to hear. What's up? Welcome to the stream. Regardless, we have Dev Milad. Welcome to the stream. We have Ishwari. We have uh, Oguskan. We have Vicky. What's up, Vicky? Welcome to the stream. And we have MD Asmail Foyes. Welcome. Welcome everyone to the stream. Awesome to have you here today. Uh, as usual, uh, if you have any questions that you would like me to answer live, there is a link to the Google form in the description box below. All right, let's jump right into the first questions. Uh, the first few questions will actually come from last week. There were some questions left from last week's live stream, so let's jump into those. The first one actually comes from Vera, who comes from uh, France, and uh, she has not yet decided whether or not she wants to study in Finland, uh, but she's in interested in doing a master's in environmental uh, sciences or something else and there's a couple of questions here here's um, there's a couple of questions here first would it be a problem to have gap years in your cv to get admitted or to start a life in finland whether it be in education or in work life no it will not have uh, impact on your ability to get admitted to study in finland <laughs> uh, second i'm trying to feel um, i'm trying to look for online courses volunteering and staying oh i'm, I'm sorry i'm trying to fill in the gap years uh, through online courses volunteering and staying active in general i just have uh, a degree at the moment that's co completely fine and actually that doesn't even count as a gap year per se because if you're volunteering or for example educating yourself through other means than uh, uh, just an official course that's fine as well uh, actually many many uh, employees employers in Finland actually uh, very very much appreciate uh, for example volunteer experience because that shows um, the employer that you're actually willing to do uh, work for someone else without getting yourself any gains especially if we're talking about unpaid vol uh, unpaid volunteers so that's actually a very, very positive thing for you to have in your CV. Uh, actually a good insider tip for everyone. Uh, then the next question comes from Teha, who comes from India. And Teha is uh, applying to do his master's in data sciences. And uh, the question is, I'm a bachelor's in business administration, um, uh, currently working with two plus years uh, of experience in HR, currently doing a diploma in business analytics. How is, the, how is the data science field in Finland and what kind of colleges or universities are good for it? Uh, yeah, first of all, super quickly about the terminology. In Finland, we're actually, we do not actually talk about colleges. So we have two types of higher education institutions. We have universities and we have universities of applied sciences. Uh, the, the biggest differences here are that the universities are more academic and they're more theoretical uh, and they teach both bachelor's 
bachelor's, master's, and then of course PhD as, PhDs as well. Uh, while the universities of applied sciences are more uh, hands-on and practical, and they are sometimes called polytechnic schools, and they mostly teach bachelor studies, but you can also do some master's courses there as well. However, they do not teach any PhD studies, and uh, they um, more universities of applied sciences more or less prepare you for a specific a career while universities just give you an overall general education into your field. So there's a, a few differences here. Uh, in, in terms of you, you uh, your question, data sciences is a very, very uh, f rapidly grow, growing field in Finland. There's a huge amount of demand for people who actually know what they're doing. So if you're really talented with data and you have a, gr a graduate degree from data sciences, that's going to be excellent in terms of your career prospects in Finland. So that's definitely, definitely recommended. Uh, in terms of your, you having a business, uh, uh, um, an undergraduate degree or a graduate degree from business administration, that's totally fine. You should be, that should make you eligible to apply for a degree in data sciences on a master's level. Uh, and then, then about universities, all the university hands-on is the best university for data sciences. The second one would be the University of Helsinki. Um, they are both excellent, excellent schools, rank really well globally. However, the big difference, biggest difference here is that all the university is a bit more business oriented, while the University of Helsinki is a bit more uh, theoretical and, and research oriented. So you just have to cho choose the school based on which uh, kind of an orientation you, you prefer. Uh, also, super quickly before we continue, let's see. See, we have Sina Sina Mobash ba, ba, Sina Mobasheri. Welcome to the stream. Awesome to have you here. We have. Uh, did I already say hey to Jess? I did not say hey to Jess. Hello, Jess. Welcome to the stream as well. We have a Gloria in the stream. What's up? Welcome to the stream. And we have Muhammad Sabur Ahmed. Welcome to the stream again, my friend. Awesome to have everyone here. Um, then the next question from the forum. Uh, by the way, I'm doing this pretty much in a rapid fire session because we have so many questions in the form. I'm just trying to, you know, run through these first ones because these are still from last week. Uh, so the next question comes from Hani, who comes from Egypt. And Hani is starting school this semester at the University of Helsinki. Very nice. Starting his bachelor's in computer sciences. Very cool. Uh, a couple of questions here. What, one, what can I do in Helsinki if I arrive around a week earlier before my studies start? Get yourself a si local SIM card, not a prepaid card, but a SIM card. Uh, make sure to furnish your apartment if, if you have not done so. Get yourself a public transit ticket so that you, so that you can move around uh, for a very cheap price. Um, then, uh, for example, make sure that you know how to commute from your home back to, to, the, to the campus and back again. Uh, and then after that, basically everything is just, just start getting to know the city, you know, start uh, searching for different kind of shops that you might want to be using. Uh, go to go and visit the grocery stores near you for the first times. You know, try to, especially since you come from uh, Egypt, the products that we use here in Finland are going to be quite a bit different from you, uh, from Egypt. So, you know, try to get used to the, the Finnish day-to-day -day life. And then there's a lot of things that you can actually see in Helsinki. I would just check, you know, Google Helsinki best sites for tourists and, you know, use seven, uh, use the, you know, five, seven days that you have just, you know, run through the biggest tourism uh, attractions. Uh, most likely uh, your, you know, tutor group and your, uh, you know, fellow students will also want to see some. So you will, you will be then able to revisit some of these places. But, you know, within a week, you can see a lot of Helsinki if you just want to, you know, if you have the motivation to go out and, uh, you know, just have fun. Second question, where can I get affordable winter clothes? Uh, winter in my country is very different. That is very true. Um, there are multiple secondhand shops in Helsinki that you can use. However, what I would recommend you to do is to go to the, go to the Kampi shopping center, which is in, the, in downtown Helsinki. They have multiple, you know, global um, mainstream brands there, like Zara, for example, that sell pretty affordable winter clothing. However, do know that the season is not here yet. So if you want, you know, proper, proper winter clothing, you have to still wait for a while, most likely until September, until they change the season in the stores. Actually, they might have some discounts for summer clothing right now. Uh, so if you want to use those, that would be also also, also really good. Um, then, of course, that you know, you have those second store shops, but I would, uh, you don't actually save that much money in terms of winter clothing in those. So I would just go to the, you know, shopping centers and, you know, check out these big, big chains because they have very, very low, ch low prices. And then three, do I need to learn Finnish before I arrive? No, but I highly, highly recommend that everyone would download a couple of apps that I have 
listed in uh, some of my frequent um, uh, most recent videos. Um, I think actually tomorrow I will have a video coming out where I will uh, list out a certain amount of mobile apps that I recommend that everyone downloads before you come to Finland because those will not only help you, you know, you know, go around uh, in Finland, uh, they will also help you with your day-to-day -day stuff and also there will be a couple of things that are very useful if you ever go uh, get in uh, in trouble or in a emergency situation. So uh, make sure to, to keep an eye out on the video tomorrow if you have not... Uh, turned on the notifications for the channel, I highly recommend that you do that so that you will be notified when I upload new videos. Uh, then the next question from the form, <coughs> excuse me, comes from uh, Konul Ahmad Sara, who comes from Azerbaijan, and uh, she is applying to the uni uni uh, University of Uvascula as well as the uni University of Oulu. Very good, both excellent universities, to do her master's in educational management or global cooperation or and or I guess and there's a couple of questions here again so hi Oliver I have a master's degree in international relations and diplomacy and working experience in edu the educational field uh, basically three plus years at the international office of a university in my home country cool I'm planning to apply to the pro master's program in education management in the next application period would my professional background be helpful in getting admitted to another field also getting employed later uh, I'm also learning Finnish language right now. Absolutely, yes. Um, of course, you know, your degree is going to be a bit different from the educational sector. So please make sure that the previous degree that you have is may actually makes you eligible to apply to this second master's. Uh, in Finland, how this works, and this applies to everyone who has not yet applied to study in Finland. If you want to apply for a master's program, your previous degree... Uh, in most people's cases, that would be your undergraduate degree or bachelor's. Uh, but in, in her case, that would be her uh, her previous master's or her previous uh, 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 bachelor's. Uh, the previous degree has to make you eligible to apply for that program. What the, the, this, this is always decided on a case-by-case -case basis by the university, but basically to give you a couple of examples. <laughs> Uh, you need to be able to basically transfer to a master's level studies without having, you know, any any kind of issues. Um, meaning that, for example, if you have a bachelor's in, let's say, business and you want to do a master's in physics, that's not going to happen. You will most likely not be able to apply. Uh, on the other hand, if you, for example, have a ma bachelor's in nursing and you want to do a master's in business, Again, not going to happen. You need to have your previous degree in a field that is close enough to the program in uh, to your master's program in order for you to make uh, be eligible to apply however this is always determined by the university that you're applying to so don't give up if you are not at, quite sure just send the university admission offices an email tell them what kind of a degree you have and what kind of courses it um, contained and they will most likely be able to help you but yeah definitely your degree is going to be helpful uh, learning some basic finish is al also going to be very much helpful Awesome. Let's see. Uh, who else do we have here in the stream? We have Danishk Pavar. Welcome to the stream. We have Shopam Bisht. Uh, I'm not sure if I said hey, hey to you as already. I don't think so. What's up? Welcome to the stream. And we have Andre Makarov. Welcome to the stream. Awesome to have you here. Uh, Andre actually saying, I've got a really good winter coat in Prisma, which is a very big supermarket. Uh, or hypermarket in, in Finland. For 50 euro, it lasted for four winters until it got unwashably dirty <laughs> in its color. Yeah, absolutely great. And of course, uh, Andre, I would guess that you, if I remember correctly, you, uh, you are from uh, Russia. So you know uh, quite a bit about winters and, and you know what, what kind of clothing is, is good enough. Uh, but yeah, definitely there's a lot of places in Finland where you can, you know, get Re relatively cheap winter clothes that are not going to blow your budget. Uh, so so make sure to keep an eye out on those. Really good tip. <laughs> uh, we have also, we have Ghazi Abdullah Al Rahan uh, Refat. Welcome to the stream. And we have also uh, Dovlat. Welcome to the stream again, my man. Well, awesome to have you here. Uh, anyway, the next question from the form comes from Neha, who comes from India, is applying for, I'm sorry, Neha is starting school this semester at Aldo University doing his master's not sponsored, by the way. There you go. Uh, doing his master's in automation and electrical engineering. And the question is, how should one look and apply for research and teaching assistant jobs at Aalto University? Simply, simply put, go to the professor teaching a specific course and ask them. 
that's the that's the best way to do uh, do this. Uh, sometimes universities also, and this applies to every university. Sometimes universities do post assistant type of uh, job positions uh, or job ads in their internal um, career services website whatever every single university has a different kind of career service website uh, th this is the same thing for alto as well however in my experience and in the ex based on the experience that you know a lot of my friends who have done this have worked as course assistants or research assistants basically what they've done is that they've had a really in interesting course with a super interesting professor and they've uh, they've uh, gotten a really good grade out of the course and they've basically just walked into the professor's uh, offices you know, do, during the COVID time, you would you should call first or send an email first. But they would basically just walk in, say, "Hey, I'm blah blah blah. Uh, I'm I'm looking for an assist assistant type of job. Uh, is there anything available, for example, in the courses that you uh, run?" Uh, do note that, um, of course, you're coming in in as a master master student. Um, you would most likely not be able to apply for an assistant role in master's level courses, especially not uh, during your first year. However, you could be able to get some kind of a you know assistant role, for example, uh, working in on bachelor's level courses. However, uh, that's always dependent on the professor. But yeah, there you go. Then next question uh, again from Neha. Uh, the question is, can we cycle in Finland during winter? If so, what kind of cycles should we buy? Yes, you can. However, it depends on the weather. If there's a lot of snow, I've never done it myself. I know that some people do. And there are, you know, very specific type of uh, winter tires that are super thick. But those, those are also quite expensive and uh, it, they don't go into ev every type of uh, bicycle. Some people actually buy specific type of bicycles that have these flat tires for winter and then they just drive them, you know, around the year. However, during the summer, of course, there's going to be a lot of friction with these very flat tires. I think they're actually called flat tires, uh, which means that it's pretty actually tough to, to cycle during the summer. However, during the winter, it of course makes everything possible. Um, so yes, you you can. And of course, depending on where you are, you would be coming to Aalto University, meaning, the, meaning Helsinki or the capital region. We actually get snow here nowadays quite late in the year, usually around December. And uh, the snow usually melts around late March, uh, late March, you know, somewhere in April, end of April. So, so the, actually, the cycling uh, season is very long in Helsinki, especially. <laughs> Highly recommended. It. It's a lot of fun. Really good way to to move around. Um, then the next question is. Uh, uh, then the next question is uh, comes from Aiza Azas, who comes from Algeria. Awesome! I think I uh, Aiza, you are the first person from Algeria to, to visit the the live stream, which is awesome. Welcome. Uh, Aiza is uh, applying to the University of Oulu or Aalto University or the University of Tampere to do his master's in telecommunication engineering and electrical engineering. And the question is, should I have some amount of money in my bank account in order to get a student permit resident uh, to student residence permit great question the answer is yes you need to have uh, just let me show you super quickly <laughs> let's actually share the screen there you go <laughs> All right, so uh, this is the website of the Finnish Immigration Service. Uh, if you actually check out the URL, whoops, never mind. The URL is migri, M I G R I dot F I forward slash E N forward slash means uh, dash of dash support. Uh, another way for you to actually get this is to just Google migri, uh, means of support, uh, student. And uh, here we go, students mean means of support. And uh, on this page, uh, the Finnish Immigration Service specifies that you need to have at least 560 euros um, at your disposal every month uh, to be able to pay for your accommodation, uh, food and other needs. This means that if you apply for a two year permit, uh, basically you can apply for permits either one year at a time or two years at a time. Uh, so for a two year stay, you must have 13,440 euros on your bank account as a non-European Union student. Uh, however, if you want to only apply for one year uh, residence permit, which you, which you basically have to redo every single year, you need to have 6,720 euros on your account before you apply for the residence permit. So please check out this website. There's a lot of information here. And uh, for example, there's a lot of um, information about whether or not you can actually work for uh, work basically as a uh, way of supporting yourself financially. Uh, so if I summarize really quickly, during the first year in Finland, no, you cannot. You need to have the money uh, that I just mentioned here. However, starting from the second year onwards, you can then work uh, to, to support yourself financially in Finland. 
Uh, great question. Then the next question comes from uh, Makita, who comes from Illyria. And Makita, <laughs> Makita is uh, uh, coming to Finland for, for work, not for school, uh, specifically in the software development field. And uh, the question is, if I work as a software developer as a freelancer and make around 6,000 euros per month, how should I handle taxes as a Toiminimi or uh, an LLC? So Toiminimi is a private... Uh, Sole a sole proprietor in Finnish, so basically just a business uh, format uh, for yourself if you're just a sole entrepreneur. Uh, so uh, a sole propri pro proprietor um, or an LLC, or which one of those would be, uh, or one of those invoicing services that we have in Finland, where you basically um, the there's a a lot of services where Finnish companies they bas basically take care of everything for you in terms of the, you know. Um, uh, uh, for example, accounting, uh, taxes, um, financial disclosures, all, all this kind of stuff. And you basically just do what you do and then they take a cut from your income. So uh, in your case, what I would recommend you to do is to set up an LLC or Osake Yhtiö, or it's an LTD, I think, in, in the US, um, limited, liabil liable company, limited, limited liability company. I think uh, the, the reason is that if you make that much money, if you have a if you make more than 6000 euros per month uh, in revenue uh, and you don't have an LTD or LLC, you're going to be taxed extremely heavily. So having an LTD is going to help you in, in a lot in terms of taxes. And if you have an LTD, then you cannot use any of these invoicing services. Rather, what I recommend you to do is to get a really good accountant and then through that accountant, get a license to a some kind of an accounting system that also has invoicing included. Uh, that's how I do my my business. Uh, works really great. Don't have to take care of uh, my um, my accounting or, or, for example, any of the financial stuff, uh, ex except budgeting, because that's, you know, a, a job for the entrepreneur. <laughs> uh, Super quickly, before we jump into the next question, let's uh, check a couple of comments here. Um, the Architect of Lily Ponds, that's an awesome name, <laughs> saying, Hello, I'm excited to hear so much useful information. Welcome to the stream. Awesome to have you here. Uh, if you're actually getting some valuable information already now, I would really appreciate if you could, you know, gently tap the uh, like button because that helps YouTube algorithm gods know that you're actually getting some value out of the stream and they will push the stream to other people. So welcome. Uh, then we have... <laughs> Da, 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 da. Christian Carrier saying a lot from Italy. Love you and your work. Thank you very much, um, uh, Christian. That's very highly appreciated. Thank you for being here, uh, for allowing me actually to do this as my job. That's all because of you guys are actually watching and, and you know, bearing, <laughs> you know, taking in what I'm saying. And uh, then we have Alexander he Heinland saying, Hi, Oliver. Thanks a lot for your videos. I, it's really useful and interesting. I've listed all of them as a podcast release more, please. Oh, that's really cool. That's really cool to hear. Oh, that's that's a very uh, unique way of listening to the, the to the videos. That's awesome. Cool. All right. Uh, moving on, and don't worry, guys. I will get to some questions from the chat a bit later. But if you want to get your answer, uh, your question answered faster, I recommend still that you post your question into the form because I'm going to run through a bunch of them right now, and only that only after that I will go into the chat to answer questions from there. Uh, and yes, Bargamt uh, Game Dev saying YouTube algorithm is hungry for likes. Yes, feed that algorithm, <laughs> feed the algorithm guard guards. They have hungry, hungry um, algorithm beasts. That's true. Um, completely insane YouTuber jokes. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I do apologize. Anyway. The next question from the forum comes from Murit, who comes from Pakistan, starting school this semester at Alta University, doing his master's in computer sciences. Very nice. Uh, congratulations on the admission. Uh, the question is, could you suggest what kind of snowshoes one should purchase? What brands would you recommend? Uh, really good question. Uh, let me just pull out a web store that I use personally, or not, not the store, but... Um, uh, by the way, this is not sponsored. Uh, this is my favorite place to get, uh, you know, any kind of winter... Um, gear so i just wanted to share this to you uh so scandinavian outdoors uh, dot com is is the place where i go to uh, whenever i get anything you know that i want to last for a long time uh so for example if you go to shoes um <laughs> let's see blah, winter shoes um all winter shoes uh, that no 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 you don't need this you don't need this or uh, no 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 need for those no need for those never well for example here timberland perfect oops sorry timberland here on the right um i've had timberlands for years 
very good. They're fully waterproof as long as you keep good care of them. And uh, they're actually not that expensive if you think about them. And the cool thing here is that because of the material, if you take good care of these and, you know, have these, uh, uh, have the soles taken care of, etc., these will last for you for years and years and years to come. I have a pair of uh, Timberlands that are like five, six years and they're still perfect, uh, like new. Um, what else, for example? <laughs> Uh, yeah, Mer Merrell Merrell is is a very good one, but those are a bit too over overkill for you. Overkill. Uh, Heli Hansen, very good. Uh, then, for example, um, anything from Salomon is is very nice. Um, uh, Halti, uh, which is H A L T I, that's a Finnish brand, very very old brand, very good, very good as well. Um, and then if I just check out, you know, outdoor shoes, uh, yeah, Heli Hansen, very good. Uh, uh, Halti, yeah, so here, Halti. Halti is a Finnish brand. They make excellent winter shoes. Um, of course, these are all kind of very outdoorsy, but these, this is the store where I go to. But the, the same thing, the same brands apply to, you know, a more casual winter shoe, shoe wear as well. Uh, again, uh, Salomon Hagloff is also really, really good here. Um, that's also really, really nice. Jack Wolf, Wolfskin all really well well recommended i've basically used all of this and then if you want to get really really nice you know higher quality that will last you for a lifetime mindle they make excellent hiking shoes for example and uh, i'm actually going to buy hindle shoes for my annual hiking trip this year because my old shoes are wearing out quite fast so there hopefully that gave you some kind of an idea uh, and again you can buy these kind of shoes you know in any big um, uh, shopping center around Finland. You don't have to go to Scandinavian outdoors. Just go into any kind of big, any kind of a shoe store in any shopping center. They should have these brands available at least to, to some extent. There you go. Uh, then the next question comes from Mariana Moretti, who comes from Brazil. And uh, Mariana is already in Finland doing her master's in education, which is awesome. And um, uh, the question is, hey, I'm starting my master's in teaching and learning at the Obo Academy in September. That's very nice, excellent school. And I'm looking forward to studying in Finland. I'd like to know which extracurricular activities can, can I take part in uh, so I can improve my CV? That's a very interesting question. Very, very good question. So basically what I would recommend you to do is to think about what kind of things you will bring you value in terms of your, your future career. <laughs> so uh, of course, in your case, that would be education. So I would say that anything where you have to organize for example larger events where you uh, you know have to be um, uh, working as some kind of a man in some kind of a managerial role uh, uh, that would be all good however uh, you know you have to uh, this is and this tip is to everyone in Finland extracurricular extracurricular activities at uh, at the universities is a huge part of the student culture here and that's that's something very important to to Finnish students especially this means taking part and volunteering in different kind of clubs events um, organizing parties um, partaking in the student organizations overall at the university and these range from you know subject-based clubs uh, to all the way to sports uh, you know um, science um, uh, for example, a couple of examples here. What I've done during my studies, I actually was part of a skydiving club for four years and I chaired uh, the club for two years out of those two, uh, four. Uh, in addition, I was uh, a part of a, a founding member and a part of a um, uh, extreme sports club that did, for example, rock climbing, bouldering, hiking, kayaking, uh, uh, ultra, ultra running, etc. A lot of fun that as well. I did some marketing there. Then I, for example, volunteered in a, a subject club that basically did sales or practiced sales. And I've basically done sales all my professional career, which is not that long, but you know, you get the point anyways. And for example, that that has been very, very important for my, for my CV. And I've actually gotten two of my previous jobs through that uh, student club because some of the, the people who recommended me into those jobs were actually part of that club as well. Um, at, this, at the same time. Uh, in addition, I've organized, I've been part of organizing events from small parties to, you know, small table, you know, um, 
dinner parties to, you know, a few dozen people to uh, uh, events where we have, you know, 20,000 people involved. Uh, so huge range of activities that you can do. And what I would recommend you everyone to do is to simply choose what you're super interested in uh, because Finnish employees, I'm sorry, Finnish employers or employers in Finland generally appreciate volunteering at universities no matter what it is that you do but of course if you want to you know uh, improve your professional skills or get some experience into your cv that is relevant into your field then just select the the, the different clubs and events based on your professional interests there is going to be a lot of options for you uh, of course uh, at the op academy because there's a faculty of education there's going to be also a student organization for that faculty and they will most likely have especially like career related uh, um, uh, you know activities and, and club clubs so there you go hopefully you that gave everyone a bit of context uh, that's uh, a very important thing to remember that you know student activity and volunteering is a very big part of the Finnish student culture and student experience and I highly recommend that everyone does at least some kind of volunteering uh, because it's not only you know good for your CV but it's just a lot of fun it's so much fun and especially uh, a lot of people have been asked have been asking me for tricks and tips on uh, getting uh, how to get to know people in Finland especially local students Volunteering in student clubs and organization is, uh, or organizations is hands-on the best way to get really good long-term friendships, especially from Finnish students, because that's something that we spend a lot of time on and people, you know, get to know them, each other really well doing this kind of uh, things. So there you go. Uh, then uh, uh, there's a lot of really good discussion going on in the chat. Uh, so Devon, thanks for, for participating in the discussion. Uh, we have Ivan, welcome to the stream. Uh, Ivan is actually saying, hi Oliver, is it possible for a EU student to have government financial support uh, to study at Aalto University? As a general rule of thumb, no, it's not possible. Uh, the government funding is only for f uh, Finnish nationals. There are a couple of very small exceptions, uh, uh, but you basically uh have to be in a special group of people in order to be eligible for financial support from the government uh so uh, as a general rule of thumb no uh jet Godi, what's up my man welcome to the stream awesome to have you here uh then all right the next question from the form comes from naminta who comes from india uh she's coming for to finland for work not for school and uh, she's a nurse awesome and the question is, as a nurse, I need to get a Finnish language certificate for my uh, to get uh, certified or registered as a nurse in Finland. So is there any possibilities of getting a language course material or is there any way of getting language course materials and also Finnish online language courses? Yes, there are. Uh, for example, I recommend that you check out the Finnish language course um, that is made by Alexi himself. So if you don't know, Alexi is another Finnish YouTuber and he's talking quite a bit about Finnish culture and he has a very good Finnish language course that I highly recommend that you take. Uh, it is paid. However, I think Alexi has a very good take on the course. <laughs> I don't have a link for, for it right now, but you can just Google Alexi himself, Finnish language, and you should find it from, the, from Google uh, uh, very, very easily. Uh, in addition, um, Let's see, uh, the, uh, the city of Helsinki actually has a lot of really good uh, Finnish language courses. So if you just Google uh, Finnish language course Helsinki, uh, you should have this finnishcourses.fi, this link here, and click that and you will find uh, a lot of really good Finnish language courses and teachers from this website. The cool thing here is that this is very, very trustworthy. This website is actually run by the, the city of Helsinki and every single uh, teacher on this uh, website uh, and uh, all the courses are credited. So for example, if you want to you know, teach in Finland, if you want to become a teacher, you need to have a master's degree in education. And uh, in my understanding, if not everyone, then basically almost every teacher that we have here uh, does have an educational background, uh, does have an educational background in education. <laughs> and uh, these are really good. There are, you know, multiple levels. There are free, there are uh, uh, paid courses. There are courses that are done physically in the cities as well as online. So I would recommend you to check this out. This is the best source for very good high quality Finnish language education, uh, uh, unless you are already in Finland studying, because in that case, I would recommend that you take courses at your university. There you go. Uh, 
Ivan, you're most welcome. Hopefully that gave you a bit of context around the question. Uh, let's see. <laughs> the next question comes from Carl from Germany. And uh, Carl is applying to Aalto University to do his bachelor's in economics. And uh, then he spe specializing in, I think, ISM is Aalto University. Let's see. That's uh, information and service management. It's, it's basically just a major program under Aalto University School of Business. Cool. Very nice. Great program. And the question is, however, once we are in Aalto, is it very selective to go study abroad, Canada or Australia, during bachelor's and or master's and or during my master's? Is it like the only top 1% of students who get selected for those locations or is it something realistic that one can hope for? <laughs> I would like to have an idea of uh, of how competitive and difficult it is to study abroad in those locations. Uh, so, so here, by the way, we're talking about exchange studies. So if uh, what uh, Carl is talking about here is that if you come to study in Finland, uh, either your bachelor's or master's or both, you will have an opportunity to actually take one semester out uh, in another uh, country as a part of your studies in Finland. Basically your exchange studies there. Uh, so so um, anyway, let's read this uh, question on, until the end. Because if it's only one or two students out of hundreds of students, I know I wouldn't have a chance. So I'd like to have an idea of, of, of that, uh, to know if it's realistic for me to do a semester abroad in Canada or Australia. Um, and if uh, this uh, or if it's something com uh, extremely competitive and uh, to be not to be hopeful about. Great question. So, okay, so what Carl is talking about here is that when you apply, if you want to do an exchange period abroad, so not in Finland, uh, as a part of your studies in a Finnish university. Uh, usually how this, how this system works is that each university in Finland has a network of collaborating universities around the world, uh, into which, uh, to which you can apply as an exchange student. For example, Aalto University has um, partner universities all around the globe. There's hundreds of them and you can do, so you can basically go and do your exchange in Mexico, Australia, Germany, New Zealand, uh, India, China, basically wherever. Uh, name the country and you most likely can go there to do your exchange. Um, and how people are, are selected into these uh, schools is based basically based on your weighted GPA. Uh, so your your not not just your GPA, but the the weighted GPA, which basically takes into account the GPA or your uh, um, uh, uh, grades from your courses and the uh, amount of credits that each of those courses gives you. So the the more credits a course gives, the the bigger bigger the weight uh, there is in the weighted GPA. Uh, and specifically in terms of Canada and Australia, yes, it is pretty com uh, competitive. However, you don't have to have a you know, perfect GPA in order to get to these, especially in a master's level, because most people actually go to uh, do their exchange during their bachelor's. However, if you also want to do your um, uh, exchange during your bachelor's and you want to go to Australia, uh, especially C the U University of Sydney, that is one of the most competitive, competitive universities from Aalto University. I think the University of Eastern California uh, Southern California is the second one, or they're basically the two top universities that people go to from Finland because they're the most exotic. The, they're the most exotic ones, or for as far away from Finland as possible and warm. Uh, however, Canada is also pretty com com um, competitive, but they have multiple universities there, and they're not as competitive as as Australia. Also, do note that Australia has multiple universities. I think Sydney as well as Canberra, I think, which are the uh, options at Aalto. At least the last time I checked, like five years ago. <laughs> Uh, however, you can actually see the list of universities on Aalto University's website. Just Google Aalto University Exchange uh, Partner Universities. You should find it. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's not one or two, two students, but it's maybe three, four students per year. Uh, and yes, it's competitive, but do remember that there's also so many different universities across the con uh, world and people spread around all, all over the place that you absolutely have a chance of going there. However, if you want to do this on your bachelor's, uh, you need to have a pretty, pretty good GPA over four out of five at least. Um, however, it's easier to get into these uh, on your master's as I, because as I mentioned, most people go to do their exchange during their bachelor's. There you go. However, there's also not as many spots available for master's. So just, you know, take that into account. Uh, let's see. <laughs> um, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Alex Ifan saying, the last time I, I watched your live stream, you were soaked in sweat. Yeah, that was, that was a couple of weeks ago. Holy 
crap it was hot in Helsinki, over 30 degrees Celsius. And, and, and because there is a lot of traffic uh, outside the windows here at, at my office, I can't keep them open uh, during the live streams. And I was sweating like crazy. Even I had a t-shirt. Now I actually have a t-shirt and a, you know, long sleeve. And, and I'm, I'm just fine. It's, you know, bearable here right now. It's, it's actually very nice. It's been raining for a couple of days, but it's actually very nice weather currently. Uh, but yeah, yeah, last time it was very warm. Um, by the way, just mentioning to everyone, uh, repeating the same question in the chat, or, uh, you know, every couple of seconds will not help you get your question answered. Either post your question into the Google form and I will get to it at some point, or just post it, post it there maybe once every 10 minutes or so and I might be able to get into it. You know, posting the same question will only get you uh, on a timeout and, and at worst uh, will also get you banned. So just, you know, please take that into account. Um, so yeah. Uh, anyway, the next question from the form comes from Kasra, who comes from Iran, and Kasra is, uh, has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but is interested in a master's in engineering. Very good. And the question is, I want to know if there's a huge cultural so shock for Middle Eastern people in Finland, knowing that I'm pretty familiar with the Western, Western culture, not Finland in par particular. I'm from I uh, Iran, by the way. Um, great question. So let's, let's put it this way. If you're if you are familiar with the Western culture, you should not have that big of a culture shock in Finland. I would say that the biggest culture shocks in Finland happen because of the seasons or the, the you know, how the weather changes throughout the year because we have very heavy seasons, as well as, for example, some of the language barriers that are you're going to see in uh, here in Finland as well. However, in terms of the culture, not massive differences. The only thing which you cannot really see from me right now, but the Finnish people are not that talkative. So if you're a super extra social person, um, then that might be something that you notice and might have to get used to. Uh, however, I would say that if you have been to Europe before, not much difference altogether. Great question, though. Yeah. Then the next question also comes from Carl from Germany. And uh, the question is, is 3,000 to, to 3,500 euros a good salary in Helsinki uh, per month? Uh, and how is it compared to the averages? Is it a middle or higher class? What's considered a high salary there? So that's a good question. And it, of course, depends on the job, the your educational background, your experience, work experience, the, the um, position that you're applying to, etc., etc. However, the median salary in Finland... Um, let's see. I think the median salary in Finland is uh, just a, just over 3,000 euros before taxes. Uh, so that's, you know, there. So if you, for example, have a master's in, let's see, in economics, uh, you will most likely start somewhere around 3,000 euros per year. However, that goes up really, really fast fast as you accrue more experience. And actually, uh, masters in um, those with a master's in economics or master's in business usually have much, much, much higher uh, salaries than what, what is media, median or average in Finland. So let's say 3,000, 3,500 euros is, is a very good starting salary for a recent graduate in business in Finland. However, um, you will pass that very quickly uh, after, uh, you know, after you start accumulating experience. Uh, having said this, uh, do know that, for example, some um, in some uh, fields, for example, if you become a nurse, uh, your salary will be below the median in Finland, un which is very unfortunate. Uh, however, uh, um, so so for those kind of fields, uh, 3,500 is, is, is a lot. Um, but of course, you, you you would need to also take into account that, for example, a de degree in nursing is is a bachelor's level degree, and if those people want to do a master's, then of course their salary will, you know, bump up as well. But yeah, thirty five hundred euros is is a very good salary in Finland. In general, it's it's higher than the median, and uh, however, if you have a ma master's in business, you will go very quickly, very uh, very much higher. So that you know, just take that into account. <laughs> um, Let's see, the next question comes from Monke, who comes from France, and uh, he's starting school this semester at the Comic University of Applied Sciences, and the he's doing a bachelor's in business, very nice, and the question is off-topic in his mind, uh, off-topic question and fun one at the same time, is it true, for example, that doctors show up to work with their pajamas on? People really don't mind what you wear as long as it's appropriate. Yeah, so this is actually a funny question, of course, not literally, uh, 
doctors will not mo most likely come to work in pajamas <laughs> and um, but yeah it's it's definitely true in Finland we have a very relaxed working culture and we have a very good you know work-life balance here it's very important for Finnish people especially that's why we for example also have very long summer holidays uh, if you work full-time in Finland you will basically have one month of paid holidays every single year um, and, and part of that, you know, relaxed working culture is the way that we dress. However, this, uh, you know, the dress code, of course, is dependent on the jobs that you're working. Uh, so, for, exa for example, if you work in uh, investment banking, then, you know, black, you know, black suit tie is most likely pretty much default. Uh, of course, depends on the company as well. If you're a big multinational corporation, you know, suit and tie most likely mo most appropriate. However, if you work in a small investment banking company, you know, smart casual, uh, uh, you know, straight pants, uh, you know, a colorful jacket, for example, no tie, just a, you know, uh, um, uh, nice shirt should be just fine. Then again, for example, for me, I work in uh, I work in the startup industry. It's it's completely different. It depends always on who I'm meeting. Uh, many of my customer uh, meetings, I, I I might even dress like this. Sometimes I have a suit on. Uh, if I meet with you know other stakeholders, I I might dress completely differently. But yeah. As a general rule of thumb, very, very, you know, good question. In Finland, we have a very relaxed working culture, but it, of course, in the end, depends on your job. Oh, and by the way, actually, very good question uh, came into mind. <laughs> Here's an insider tip, tip uh, from per, uh, from someone who has experience in the HR market. When you apply for a job in Finland, uh, doesn't matter what the field is. Uh, when you, you, if and when you're um, invited into an interview, and especially when you, um, if you get a job, and then you are planning your first day at the uh, at, at that job uh, so a lot of people always consider or wonder how should I dress for an interview or to to my first day at that at that particular company the best way to do this is actually by going through the company website and their Instagram because a lot of Finnish companies actually use Instagram as kind of their you know insider look into the company and they post a lot of pictures of their own employees and you know the day-to-day -day stuff that hap that's happening in at the office and that's actually the best way to, for you to check out how do they j dress in general at the company offices and that's basically the uh, dress code that you should copy for your interview so there, an insider tip. Uh, why this is relevant is because, for example, if you're applying for a software uh, startup working in sof software development, most likely having a black suit and tie is not a good idea. It doesn't really, <laughs> it's, it's not really suitable to their culture. However, if you're applying to an investment bank, you know, having a startup hoodie on is not also a good idea either. So it's always dependent on the context and on the company. But yeah, there's an insider tip for you. Great question. Great question. All right, next question comes from... Hey, Agiles, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Awesome to have you here. Uh, I'm actually doing quite well. Thank you very much for asking. Hopefully you're doing great, great as well. Uh, then the next question... Whoa, that came up high. Whoa. Okay, let's try the, that again. The next question from the forum comes from Hari, who comes from India. Hari is still in high school. But he's interested in uh, doing a bachelor's in design at Aalto University. Very nice. And uh, the question is, uh, how good is the design course at Aalto University? One of the best in the world. Uh, they rank, I think, fourth in Europe and seventh in the entire world in design and uh, um, arts and design. So it's it's absolutely great. Uh, also do take into account that it's not easy to get in because it's one of the best schools in arts in the entire world. So, you know, just take that into account. Uh, plus, actually, the, the students at Aalto University School of Arts and Design have won consistently uh, many, 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 for many years now, they have won first prizes at, in many design uh, competitions in France, uh, beating, for example, French designers. So just, you know, take that into account. Then the next question is uh, comes from Kuldip, who comes from India as well. And the Kuldip, Kuldip is coming to Finland for work, not for school. And uh, the question is, I would like to date women in Finland. Can you give me tips, please? Uh, no, I'm not the, the correct person here to give you tips. <laughs> I've been um, dating with my girlfriend for over uh, almost eight years now. So I, I don't know anything about the current dating system. For example, I've never used Tinder. Tinder is really big in Finland, of course, in the, in the dating uh, scene. However, what I would recommend you to do is to go to Alexi himself's YouTube channel. Um, he has actually a couple of really funny videos about dating Finnish people, uh, both women and, and, and men. You could just uh, look for these videos on YouTube. Just write Alexi himself uh, dating in Finland 
you should find the videos or just you know dating in Finland in general into the YouTube search and you should be able to find his videos they're actually a lot of a lot of fun um, then the next question from the form comes uh, from Neha Chehra uh, Jafer Merchant, who comes from Turkey, and she is still in high school, uh, but is interested in doing a bachelor's in education at the University of Oulu. Very nice. <laughs> and the question is, uh, I got a two A's and three A's. Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, I got some scores in school. Uh, and the question is, Will I be able to get a scholarship in the education program? And are there any fully funded or partially funded scholarships for a bachelor's in education? Uh, all right. So there are scholarship programs, both fully funded, meaning that you don't have to pay the tuition fee, but you still have to pay for your living costs. And there are also partially funded scholarships at every single university in Finland. You have to check the university scholarships from each university's own website, because the scholarships always depend on the school as well as the program. There are no universal scholarships in Finland. Uh, they're, they're always granted by the universities themselves. Uh, then uh, to your question basically about your, it, you know, your scores from school. Uh, first, there is no way for me to say what kind of scores, uh, you know, grades you can need to get from school uh, in order to, to get a scholarship. First of all, because your grades are not the only thing that uh, matter when uh, we are talking about scholarships. There's al always other variables as well. Uh, however, the problem here is that the universities in Finland do not publicize on uh, the grounds for granting scholarships to people. So it's impossible for me to say even, you know, close to detail, what do you need to get a scholarship? Sec uh, one more thing to just as a note to everyone, if you ask me about uh, to, to comment on on your opportunity or chances of getting um, uh, of, of getting granted a scholarship or even getting admitted into a Finnish school based on grades in your home country, please take into account that we have very different education systems between Finland and many other countries. And for example, the, the grades here, uh, which are Turkish, they don't tell me anything, I, absolutely nothing. Uh, so for example, uh, she's, she's ha she has here, I got two A dashes and three A's in O level levels. Uh, I have no idea what this means. Uh, we have a completely different system in high school. Fin fin Finland grades uh, your courses from uh, one to ten, and then we have our uh, high school final exams that are uh, they have very fancy Latin words for them. Um, but um, uh, again, this doesn't tell me anything. So please take that into account if you ask me about your local grades and how they compare to Finnish ones. Uh, then. Uh, actually, there is a good question here, kind of referring to, to one of the questions before. Uh, what is the average salary in the IT sector after taxes for master students in computer sciences? Also, how is the job market demand or demand for only English speaking students? Uh, in terms of IT, the IT sector, the job si situation is very good in Finland, uh, e even if you don't speak any Finnish. Uh, most of the companies working in IT and software have English as their uh, as their working language. Of course, there are companies that does not do not have English as their working language. However, the amount of of companies do, that do is growing all the time and so let's say let's put it this way if you want to work in Finland in English business and IT are the two best fields to do this because they are both super super international then in terms of the average salaries is it's completely impossible for me to say I do not have the statistics for this especially after taxes because the taxes that you pay depend on your salary so we always talk about gross salary so before taxes in Finland we never talk about net salaries here because uh, your personal taxes depend on so many different things that even if you have two people who have the same gross salary but they for example live in different areas in the two different cities they will have different taxes so so just take in, this into account however having said this in terms of your whoops uh, let's get out of here in terms of your question whoops meet frank go to this website called meet frank and this actually applies to everyone who is interested about salaries in finland uh, meet frank is a finnish startup that they're actually doing a mobile app which is really really cool that you can use to uh, apply for jobs which is really awesome uh, it, it's basically the only mobile job hunting application that there is in finland currently but however what is even more cool here is that if you go to insights on their website here insights <laughs> you can actually uh, go to um, uh, this 
uh, drop down here, uh, choose the country, Finland, and for example, in this case, software engineering or IT and sy system, system administration, software engineering, and you will have, you should get, you should get, you should get statistics on average salaries, both offered by companies as well as what is asked from job seekers. Okay, they, they're, they're having some kind of a problem with the website. However, let's try something else. Data analytics. No? Well, that sucks. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Come on. Okay, this isn't a really good demo, demo here, but they, it usually works really well. So basically what they have here is multiple graphs about different uh, statistics on salaries as well as uh, uh, depending on depending on your experience, the, the type of a job that you're working in, the type of field that you're working in, etc. So, you know, I would recommend that you go to meet, meetfrank.com maybe tomorrow hopefully their website is up <laughs> or working however that's that's one of the best sources for uh, checking uh, average salary data from finland specifically at that moment because they have graphs over time that show the fluctuation in the salaries over time which is very very cool uh all right then uh let's see the next question from the forum comes from uh, suranga who comes from sri lanka and suranga is applying to uh, the uh, Tampere University of Applied Sciences to do, um, <coughs> excuse me, to do his um, bachelor's in media and arts. And the question is, hey Oliver, I'm interested in studying at Tampere University of Applied Sciences. I want to know about uh, entrance exams for international students. Uh, are there any? And could you please make a video about Tampere University? So uh, I would love to do a, do a video about uh, the University of or, or Tampere University. I've been planning on making a playlist about basically every single university in Finland. However, that's going to take me a long time because there's 14 universities and 22 universities of applied sciences. So that's going to take a lot of research to do, you know, videos about each of them. Uh, so I'm, I will most likely do a video about each either later this year or early next year or something like this. However, it's 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 going to take some time. Uh, then in terms of the uh, entrance exams, depends on the subject that you're applying for. Uh, do note that the exact application requirements as well as the application process is always dependent not only on the university but also on the university program that you're applying to so for example if you apply to Aalto University just as an example it's easy for me because I know most mostly about uh, I know most information about Aalto because I went there so if you apply to Aalto to study arts and design uh, the process and application requirements for that is going to be completely completely different from if you apply to Aalto University to study business or economics. So it, it, the requirements not only depend on the school, because of course, you know, applying to Aalto University is going, going to be completely different from uh, Tampere University, for example, but it's also dependent on the program that you apply to. So please go to Tampere University's website, to the uh, Media and Arts program, if, if they have one, I don't know, but I, I, I assume they have because you said so. Um, and check out the specific requirements for that program from